Yo, Andrew here. Today, I would like to teach you how to use synthetic division to divide and find the answer to the following problem. A 4x cubed minus 12x squared minus 5x minus 1, which is then being divided by 2x plus 1. All right, so how do we approach this? Well, first thing is, um, you need a nice little table here to help us out with synthetic division. And what I'm going to do here, inside of this black part on the top uh, row, gets plugged in all of your coefficients in your dividend, okay? So the first uh, coefficient is going to be a 4, plug that in. Second is going to be a negative 12, plug that in. The third is going to be a negative 5, plug that in. The last is going to be a negative 1, plug that in. Now, by the way, what happens if this term wasn't here? There is a certain pattern to this. Notice how you have x cubed, x squared, x, and then this is actually x to the 0. And this is really x to the 1, right? So you're going 3, 2, 1, 0. Obviously, when you have x to the 0, it's just nothing. So you're going to have a constant there. But you need to have this following pattern uh, in order to kind of uh, plug in the values here uh, in the top row of your synthetic division table. What happens, though, if this isn't here? Yeah, well, if that isn't there, what is it? Well, if it's not there, it's 0, right? So this would just be minus 0. You can say that's minus 0x, right? Because 0 times x is just 0. And you would plug that value in. Okay, instead of the negative 5, it would just be 0. Okay. So, great. Next thing, what do we do with the divisor? Well, what we do with the divisor is we, we need to solve for the zero of this function. In other words, this is a linear function. And if I said to solve or find the zero of that function, what you would do is you would take that function 2x plus 1, and you would set it equal to zero. And then what you would do is you would solve this for x. Because when it's stated to find the zero, what they're really asking for is find the x value that produces an overall value of zero for your function. So in other words, when you solve this now for x, right, 2x is going to be equal to negative 1, divide both sides by your 2, and x is going to be equal to negative 1 half, this x value, if you were to plug it on in for your x here, makes this whole side go to zero. So this basically now represents the value that we're going to plug into uh, this space, okay, in our synthetic division table, so negative one half. All right, now after we have all those values set up, we're just going to follow a simple series of steps in order to find now the coefficients and the remainder for our quotient. Now, the first step is, whatever the first number is here, just drop it straight on down. Okay, in other words, that's why there's a red box here. You're not going to do anything. You're just going to take the number, or you're going to add zero to it, basically, if you wanted to think about it that way. And you're simply going to plug in the 4 there. Okay, now take this number, multiply it by this number. So 4 times a negative 1 half, right? What's half of 4? It's 2, and it's negative. So this gets plugged in. The result now gets plugged into the next adjacent column. And then you add these columns together, or these terms together in the same column. So negative 12 minus a 2 is going to be a negative 14. Great. Then what you're going to do is repeat the process. Take this number, multiply it by this number, and you're going to put its answer right in here. So remember, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive, and half of 14 is going to be 7. So you plug in your 7, add it together. Negative 5 plus a positive 7 is going to be a positive 2. Write it down. Repeat the process. Take this number, multiply it by this number, Put in the result right here in this cell. So it's going to be a negative 1. Now, if you're confused about how to do that, right, all you'd have to do is take this negative 1 half and then multiply it by your 2. And remember, it's really 2 over 1. So when you do this, it works out you multiply the numerator. That's negative 2. You multiply the denominators. That's 2. Negative 2 over 2 should be a negative 1, right? So that hopefully works out. All right. Now, all you have to do then is add these values together. And you're going to find now that this last cell here is going to be a negative 2. Now, hopefully we're good so far. What do these now coefficients represent? Well, your remainder will always be the value that's inside of this cell. Okay, the last cell, the cell all the way to the right here at the bottom. That's always going to represent your remainder. These now represent your coefficients, okay, for the function. In other words, this is your constant term like you had a constant over here. This is going to be your x uh, term, x to the first, just like you had over here. And then this is going to be your x squared term, okay, just like you had over here. 
And if this were to keep going, you can kind of detect the pattern, right? That would have been X cubed, X to the fourth, however long it is, right? It could have 14 million values here. You'd be there for the remainder of your life. I know it kind of feels that way right now, right? While you're in class, you're like, oh my God, is this ever going to end? It's totally going to end. It goes very quickly, all right? So enjoy it while it lasts. I know you're thinking, well, what the hell is there to enjoy? Learning should be fun. Learning should be fun. Especially when you become good at it and you practice, right? Uh, sometimes learning anything, right? I mean, do you play an instrument? If you play an instrument, if you remember back, right? It was a little frustrating possibly in the beginning because you couldn't really play anything. Couldn't play a song, couldn't play a piece, right? Depending upon what instrument you play. But you were determined. You were determined to keep going. And the better you got, the more fun it became. Because you could actually compose stuff. You can use it. It's useful, right? The same thing here. Keep practicing. Stay determined. And I promise you, the better you get, the more you're going to want to do it. The more you're going to want to do it, the better you're going to get. All right? That's why you should always focus on something you enjoy when you're choosing a career. Because you're going to spend the time necessary to become good at it. Back to math. So, these now represent uh, the coefficients of those terms, okay? Now, there's one little caveat. When you go back, you got to do one more step before we finally conclude that these are indeed your coefficients. You have to look, whatever factor uh, this is, and I'm calling it a factor, I'm calling it a polynomial, it could be called a binomial, there could be many names to that particular thing, just like if you're, right, you could be a brother, or you could be a sister. You could also be a son or a daughter. You could be a granddaughter or a grandson, right? You could be a father or a mother. I mean, right? there's so many. You could be a friend, all right? There's so many names, uh, rel uh, you know, relative names that we can give you. Same, same thing here. Several relative names we can give this. In any case, your divisor. Well, there's another one. Your divisor now. Your divisor. Whatever the coefficient is, okay, of your x term. You have to take that value and divide it into each of these coefficients, not into the remainder, though. Okay? So, these are not really the final answers yet. What you now have to do is, I'm just going to erase this for now to leave a little bit of space. And all you're going to do is you're going to divide each of these by now 2. Easy peasy. So, what's 4 divided by 2? Well, that's a 2. What's negative 14 over 2? Well, that's a negative 7. What's 2 over 2? Well, that's a 1. And this, just bring it straight down. That's just a negative 2. Okay? Now, these down here represent your true values. Okay? Your real coefficients. And now we're basically done. So all you have to do now, in terms of the final answer here, is put in your x squared next to this. Put in your x next to this. Do not put place anything near this. Okay, make this a little neater. That's really a subtraction. Since there's no sign over here, that's really an addition. And, oh, sorry. And this now is going to be a minus 2. So you're always going to take this remainder. I basically pull that negative sign on out, so to speak, and make it a subtraction. You're going to take this value, whatever it is. could be a 0, 2. And you're going to place it over your divisor, 2x plus 1. If this were a zero, obviously this whole term would just be zero, so you wouldn't have it. You would just be left with that. But in this case, we have a value there, so we can't just cancel it. And that, my friends, is going to be your quotient. That's the real quotient now. So if you don't believe me, which I don't know why you wouldn't, but if you don't, maybe you're skeptical. Maybe you're like, this guy's trying to trick me. Well, let me prove it to you that uh, this does work. Remember what we were doing. We were taking this dividend, dividing it by this divisor to find this quotient. In other words, this divided by this equals this. So what we can do to check is you can make up any x value you want. I'm going to use x as equal to zero because it's going to make my life, our lives a lot easier. So what you do is you plug in zero for x everywhere you see an x. Okay, everywhere, uh, down here as well. Okay. So let's start canceling some things that are going to cancel. So this thing goes bye-bye. This goes bye-bye. This goes bye-bye. This would go bye-bye. We'll see you later. Have a great day. 
Until next time. And let's write down then what we're left with. Now remember, you were taking this term, which is just has a negative one in it now, and you're dividing it by this term, which just has a positive one in it. And that should now equal this thing, which all that's left is a positive one, minus now, minus two over one. Just getting rid of this positive sign because we really don't need it. The question is now, is this true? Is negative one divided by one, which works out to be negative one, equal to one minus two? Is negative one equal to negative one? Yes, indeed it is, right? So ha, proved it to you. Thanks so very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this helped. And if it did, like and subscribe. It helps us out tremendously. And maybe even tell some of your classmates. We'd love to help more people. And we have thousands of videos out there, not only in mathematics, but physics and chemistry as well. And we have a lot more coming. Thank you also for all the great comments. It really gives us the motivation to continue. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Take care.